Okay, so I've been trying to gatekeep this one for a long time, but today is the day that that ends. I'm going to show you how to use Clay to create a hyper-personalized, hyper-targeted lead list of hundreds, if not thousands of people within your ideal customer profile quickly, easily, and automated. So there are two ways of going about prospecting. The first one is to find or buy or scrape a massive lead list of people. You have no idea whether they're actually interested in what you're selling or what your product is, but you reach out to them thousands of emails a month and hope that you get some responses. It's pretty unreliable and it requires a lot of resources within the email and domain space. The second way, which is obviously the one I prefer, is to create a hyper-personalized lead list. There may be less people on the list, but the quality of the prospects is so much higher and highly worth it. So I call this the laser beam approach because you're pretty much creating a metaphorical laser beam that you can use to target your ideal customers, reach out to them, pitch them, and ideally close them. So as you can see by my screen, I am using a software called Clay. It is, in my opinion, by far the best sales prospecting software on the market. And for anybody who is in lead gen, you know that creating a highly targeted and highly personalized lead list is pretty much the holy grail. And in my opinion, Clay is the only software product that can currently do this on the market. It's not free if you want to use it on a big scale, but they do have a free trial. You should definitely give it a shot, see if you like it. But honestly, I think after watching this video, it'll pretty much be a no-brainer. All right, that's enough of an intro. Let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I'm on the Clay homepage right now. And to create a new table, as you can see, I have several folders worth of tables. But to create a new one, you just click on this. And if you're looking for people, click on people. If you're looking for company, click on company. One of the most popular import uses is find companies from LinkedIn, which is what I'm going to be using in this example. And when you click on create a table here, you'll see that there are a ton of parameters that you can find companies from, whether it's their location, keywords within the description, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've already done this, so I'm just going to go straight to the table that I've created and break it down. All right, so I'm at the table right now. As you can see, I have about less than 300 companies that fit the ICP of the company that I was working with. Um, pretty much what they were looking for were companies that had between a certain range of employees and had an API, like a native company API. And so that's what we were looking for. Um, so what I did was I imported companies within the United States that had the word API within their company description. Um, and as you can see, once you import all those companies, it maps out a little bit of information for you automatically. Um, the most helpful ones generally are domain and LinkedIn URL. Um, from there, what I did was I enriched the company um, which would pretty much just give me more information on the company. It gives you all the LinkedIn data associated with said company. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to have a description mapped out. So as you can see, if I click on it, it has this full description that the company has on LinkedIn. From there, I realized that although companies may have the word API in their description, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have a native API. So I had to figure out a way to determine whether a company actually does. So what I did was I used an open AI integration within Clay. And if you click on it right here, you can see my prompt is pretty much just using this company's description. Tell me whether the company has an API with documentation that may require SDKs. Um, that's just fit with the company, the problem the company was trying to solve. And, and so I pretty much told it pretty yes if yes and no if no, nothing else. Um, and so then I fed the description in here. Um, as you can see, it feeds, you know, for each row, it just feeds the company description. Um, and then I ran it. And I checked it and it seemed to check out for all the ones that I ran the integration for. So after that, I filtered out all the ones where it said no. And then the next step was, okay, so now that I've gotten a company that has an API, a native API, who do I contact to or reach out to with the highest likelihood of a yes or a response or a meeting booked? So what I did was I, uh, Clay has an integration called find contacts at company. It pretty much just finds you certain decision makers or have people with certain keywords within their job title within each company. Um, and so in this instance, what I did was I opened the integration, I put in the company LinkedIn URL, and I asked OpenAI, this is like on ChatGPT, uh, just a list of job titles that would be most likely to be interested in the value prop of the company I was working with. So as you can see, it printed out a decent amount, development team lead, product engineers, software engineers, um, just people that you know are working on, uh, on, the, on the API end. Um, there's a couple others that for some reason aren't loading, but it is what it is. So I ran the integration. And as you can see, um, in some instances, it would just return one profile, but in others, it would return two, three, four, five, sometimes even 10. Um, and so I, I pretty much, and for some of it returned zero. So obviously I filter all the ones where it returns zero out. And um, 
after that, so I was like, okay, in some of these instances, I have seven to 10 people that could be a viable contact option. How am I going to determine the one that is most likely to be interested in our product? Um, of course, you could reach out to all of them, but it's going to use a lot more clay credits. It's going to use a lot more emails. Um, in my opinion, it's just better to reach out to one person and use your email flow on them. So what I did was I ran another chat GPT integration. And in this instance, I have a prompt. Um, it's not showing the full prompt for some reason. However, I'll give it to you. It's pretty much what I said was, here's a value prop of my company. Give me the person most likely to be interested in an email campaign from my company. And here's the list of people that you could choose from. And this is just based off of their name and their job title. My thought was the job title is going to be the most likely determining factor in whether this person is likely to respond. So we have just a list of names and titles that are all being fed from this integration right here, the find contacts at company. And we would just run that through. And, um, and I told, told him only print out the name and the title. So John Smith, chief product officer, it just made it easier for formatting purposes. Right. So, um, it took a little bit of toying to get to this point, but for me, this specific prompt worked. So I went with that. Um, we ran it and as you can see, it printed out, for each one, just the name and the position of a bunch of these decision makers. After that, I uh, pulled out their name using a formula. Um, very simple, especially if you use the AI formula feature. I just pulled out their name. Then I pulled out their first name for emailing purposes and their title, right? So, okay, now we found the person that we're looking at, the person who works for the company that we're planning on reaching out to. The next step is, of course, finding their emails. Um, so Clay has a really cool thing called data points where you can essentially run several integrations at once to look for the same data points. So for find work email, if you click on it here, and if this loads, here we go, um, it will show you first try this enrichment, then the next enrichment, then the next enrichment, and hopefully it finds a work email somewhere in there, and it all runs conditionally so you're not wasting any Clay credits within the system. Um, and so after that, um, I, I just ran those three, right? So you can see in a lot of instances, Clay could just find you the work email, but let's say there wasn't one found here. Then Detagma found one. Um, and then of course, if Detagma couldn't found, find one, Hunter would do it. Um, but it doesn't seem like that happened in many cases. And then it just prints out the validated work email here. So now we have a list of emails for these decision makers in which we can reach out to, um, and the last step of this email flow is, of course, just making sure that the email is valid. Um, a big problem with email marketing campaigns is if the emails aren't validated, then Gmail could pick up on that and possibly blacklist your domain and your email. So you don't want to do that at all, obviously. So I had to run a validate email just to make sure all the emails that I had were worth sending to. And that's it. I have now a 300 person lead list that is hyper targeted towards my ICP. And of course, the next thing would be personalizing outreach to these different companies, um, which I will likely cover in the next video. So hope this was super helpful um, and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about this.